update the trials of Trump. Before we get to the criminal cases, boom, the Supreme Court has ruled Donald Trump will remain on the ballot in every state. Now, this comes from Colorado. The court unanimously ruled that one state's election cannot control the entire country. Here's a quote from the decision, just a small part of the decision. We conclude that states may disqualify persons holding or attempting to hold state offices. States have no power under the Constitution to enforce Section 3 with respect to federal offices, especially the presidency. Of course, what they're talking about is Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which prohibits anyone involved in an insurrection from holding public office. Now, even though it was a unanimous decision, 9 to 0, four of the nine justices disagreed with the entire decision. And it's complicated and it's a long story, but it's pretty disgusting when you think about what's been happening on the Supreme Court. And I mean some of the justices taking presents and favors from rich people. Another non-criminal case that is causing Donald Trump massive financial headaches, Trump has until March 25th to either write a check for $454 million or find a company that would post a bond on his behalf, basically an IOU. He does not have the money. Another case, Trump owes E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million for sexually assaulting her and then defaming her, mainly for defaming her. He doesn't have the money. He's cash poor. A New York appeals court judge refused recently to reduce the bond amount Trump must pay. Trump tried to bargain with the judge, saying, I'll give you this much. How about this much? But it's like, it was just rejected outright. So he has to secure that half a billion dollar bond, or the state of New York can begin selling off his properties. Now, that one judge, Trump has appealed that one judge ruling, and now it's going to a multi-judge panel, so we'll see what they have to say. And as I said, if he doesn't figure this out, one way or another to pay, the state of New York promises it will begin seizing some of his hotels and properties. On to the criminal cases. First things first, the hush money case, paying hush money to a porn star and a Playboy model. The planned trial date, March 25th, it would be the country's first criminal trial of a former president. The details, Trump faces 34 charges in relation to these illegal payments. Now, last week, the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, who is leading the prosecution team, asked the judge for a partial gag order on Trump to prohibit him and anyone he directs from speaking publicly about witnesses, jurors, court staff, and Bragg's legal team, but not Bragg himself. Bragg also asked the New York Supreme Court Justice Juan Marchand to protect jurors from harassment or intimidation by shielding their names and addresses from public view. Trump is currently under a partial gag order in the D.C. case, which prohibits him from disparaging individual lawyers, witnesses, and court personnel, but not special counsel Jack Smith. Case number two. The Federal Classified Documents case, of course, this is happening in Florida. This is one of, I think, the most serious cases in the history of this country. Trump faces 40 federal charges over accusations that he kept top secret government documents at Mar-a-Lago. He just took them from the White House. And Mar-a-Lago is his home and private club. It's kind of a country club. With the government said, please give those documents back, he did everything he could not to give them back and to hide them. Now, the planned trial date was May 20th, but it ain't going to happen, my friends. It ain't going to happen. The judge, Eileen Cannon, could decide any time when this case 
will be scheduled. At a hearing Friday, Trump lawyers made their pitch for after the election of federal prosecutors said the case should start in July. The truth of the matter is Cannon is a Trump appointee and she is slow walking the case. Georgia, Georgia, what a mess. The Georgia case, such a strong case, and it's just mired down in all of these accusations about Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. In Georgia, Judge Scott McAfee said he would decide within two weeks whether Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who is leading the state election interference prosecution against Trump and a number of other defendants, whether she should be disqualified and the case dismissed. Trump and other defendants allege that Willis created at least an appearance of a conflict of interest when she had a personal relationship with an attorney she hired to work on the case. And I've covered this and recorded a lot of this hearing that's been going on, and you could watch those videos. All right, on to the federal election case, the Jack Smith case that is supposed to be held in Washington, D.C. This is Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election. Trump faces four counts relating to conspiring to obstruct the 2020 election results. Planned trial date to be announced. It was going gangbusters, but there's been a lot of wheeling and dealing from Trump's attorneys to stall this case, as they've done with others. And the question now is whether presidents are immune from criminal prosecution for acts they took while in office. And bottom line, Trump, what he did on January 6th had nothing to do with his responsibilities as president, but with the current Supreme Court in place, after listening and reading this most recent decision on the 14th Amendment, I have no hope that they're going to side with what is right in this immunity question. So the justices have agreed that they're going to take up the question of presidential immunity, oral arguments scheduled for the week of April 22nd on whether or not presidents are shielded from prosecution for actions they took while in office. Of course, Trump went on and on today about how, yes, presidents have to be immune, which is BS. There's never been a problem with any other president in the history of this nation. It's just him because of all his misdeeds. So that decision is also going to have implications for the D.C. case, but also it might affect Florida and Georgia as well. So that's a brief look at the trials of Trump, updated March 4th, 2024. State of the Union on Thursday. Yes, Joe Biden is old. Get over it. Stay tuned. I'll be posting. I post every day. Follow me. TikTok, YouTube. I'm Gloria Moraga. Please subscribe to my podcast as well. And please be safe. Thank you.